RICMAS, which is the Rome International Center for Material Science. Um, so, Professor Bianconi has a long list of uh, commitments and achievements, and I want to just maybe describe what he's mainly interested in. His long term projects look for quantum phenomena in living matter, unveiling the particular time and space in homogeneity. And the particular and the particular non-Euclidean geometry in uh, living neuron cells. So the title of this talk will be "Final Resonances Tuned at Lipschitz Transitions in Superconducting Nanofilaments: A New Physics and the Crossover Between Quantum Nanomaterials and Quantum Biology." So welcome. Uh, 
or in all Euronis uh, regions, uh, you have uh, no space uh, uh, reversal symmetry, you have no time reversal symmetry, uh, and there is not uh, no <coughs> fundamental laws. Uh, one of the problems that has been uh, concerning science was uh, if it's possible that a coherent uh, quantum world can emerge in the macroscopic world. The only case of this is uh, superfluidity and superconductivity, but it was considered to be of no importance at all because they were confined to zero temperature. Actually, uh, it is research that took up uh, uh, 100 years, so it's a huge time because you know science uh, started in Rome in, in 1630 when uh, Galileo took the Pope and bring him in the, on the hill, and, uh, in the Janigul hill, and he said to him, look in the, in, the, in the telescope. And the Pope said, I don't want to see. <laughs> and, uh, and then Galileo said, OK, I will not concern nothing about life and religion. I just confide only in the, in the reproducible uh, experiments the, where, there is no time, where there is time reversal. Uh, so the, uh, uh, our science is only 300, 400 years old. And the study of uh, looking for if it's possible that quantum coherence and quantum world appear at room temperature, I am a quantum me mechanism, uh, uh, took about 100 years. But uh, now we have uh, found that something like water, that is H3S, and uh, in the copper O2S and uh, magnesium nebride, and I will show you another organic materials, you can have a quantum mechanics, quantum coherence at minus uh, 70 centigrade. And uh, so the, but this research was not driven by theory, was driven only by material science research. The, it took uh, 30 years to understand that all these high temperature superconductors uh, actually are nano, nano, nano materials. They are self-organized at the super lattice of nanomodules quantum wires in the obvious germanium, copper, two HTS, and this new terphenin, and they are just quantum wires, or you have magnesium dichloride, iron superconductor, where they are simply a super lattice of quantum wells. What is, why it was so difficult to understand that this simple physics? The physics was that the period of the super lattice is of the order of the wavelength of electron at Fermi level. And for normal density of metal, metals, the, the size is one nanometer. So you have to know the world of nanometers to see all this stuff. If you have no methods to see nanometers, you don't, uh, uh, you cannot say nothing. That's what took uh, uh, more than 30 years in the field of IPC superconductivity. And you have uh, papers uh, with uh, uh, perhaps 100,000, uh, 10,000 citations that are completely wrong. They, they consider the system to be completely homogeneous because physics consider the system to be completely homogeneous. But uh, the new physics uh, uh, concern uh, quantum materials uh, with the wavelength at order of one nanometer. And when you go down, you make a super lattice of these uh, two different uh, components, uh, uh, like uh, graphene and, uh, uh, and copper, or different uh, components. You have a, a, a big uh, two main effects. You have charge transfer that, char that, that determine the electronic density. And you have the strain that was discussed also this morning. And the strain is very important because uh, uh, when you go down to 10 mV, uh, the strain control of energy is, is fundamental. The strain is very important uh, in a super lattice of quantum wells, so all IPC superconductors uh, induce uh, uh, corrugations. This corrugation is quite large, like at 0 0.5 uh, 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 five, five angstroms. And they were not considered to be important, why now we understand that uh, they are uh, fundamentals, because controlling the topology and the electronic states at the, at the mini-V energy range. The same is polymorphism. These materials are polymorphic, like all biological systems. They have two different uh, conformations. And then the strain can control uh, a topology uh, or topology structure of these materials. Uh, the strain is very important in IPC superconductor. If you take uh, the copper O2 plane, uh, the, the copper O2 bond lengths, you have a strain field that's over the rope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 percent. 
And uh, you have only super ITC superconductivity of I have 30 Kelvin, only if the strain is 2.5%. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's really a control, a very fine control in the milli-EV range of the chemical potential that control the system. Quantum mechanics can emerge or not in our world. So we are very fine tuning, but if you imagine the um, uh, DNA or a molecule in DNA or a molecule in, uh, in the, uh, any biological system, uh, you can see that the very small variation determine if you are living or dead. So that the, it's a very small uh, energy uh, is controlling. And actually, if you, we just added the more than uh, many, many materials, and uh, you have to see that you can reach uh, uh, clo 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 closer to room temperature superconductivity, uh, so you can merge the quantum, this is the, 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 is the, is the mountains, where uh, you come from zero temperature, and you go up, up, and you reach the room temperature quantum coherence. You see that you need a, a charge density and a pressure density that is completely clear, critical, and what happened at these points? This was a big uh, discussion for many years. And uh, actually, what is coming uh, this year, or these last two years, uh, evidence is that uh, uh, this uh, point where quantum coherence appears is a critical point where you have uh, uh, a, a Lipschitz transition. Lipschitz was a very nice guy that I was very lucky to meet uh, in the uh, 1970s in Moscow in the Phys Institute of Physical Problems. And he was always smiling and, uh, and reading. And he had the idea in 1960 that actually there are phase transitions that are not classified by Landau. They are electronic topological transition. It says that if you have a Fermi surface and then you put a little pressure, but very little one, uh, like you are interested in, uh, <laughs> in uh, with the piezo, then you can have a new, a new, a new Fermi surface appearing with the variation of energy can be 10 mV. 10 mV and you have a Fermi surface that is one and then a Fermi surface that is two. But when you have a two Fermi surface with two different uh, kind of electrons, uh, uh, it's like you are alone in a, a single man in an island and when you are a, a, in, a, in a single island with a nice woman. So it's completely different life. Uh, uh, so if a two is completely different and the other two should be like a man and, and a woman could be different uh, types, different similes. So then he had understood that there is a huge topological phase transition. You have a one type of carrier or two type of carriers. And then you can go from one case to another case to, uh, with a completely broken symmetry and a, a new class of phase transition. So this was completed now in the West uh, countries where Lipschitz was considered to be a communist uh, theory. But uh, now there is no more communism in, so in, uh, in Russia. Uh, and many, many, Russian theorists moved to different countries, and so now became very popular. Uh, what we discovered was that actually the, all the cuprate super, all the superconductors, when this is maximum, you are at the Lipschitz transition. You have many different kinds of Lipschitz transition because in topological states, for example, this is one where you have a, a two-dimensional Fermi surface, and then you have a new Fermi surface appearing that is circular, then you have like a, a direct point, and then you have a, a, a open circular. And the maximum TC happen always uh, in this case. When you have uh, a, a, a critical point of uh, neck opening, uh, uh, in iron-based superconductors, there is a lot of materials with uh, iron. Uh, but the water, they all come when there is a you and they all, all, they all have something in common that is a new, a new red uh, class of electrons are living in the very surface. Um, if you take uh, magnesium dimoride, that is a nice graphene, uh, it's exactly the same symmetry as graphene uh, with metal intercalated, uh, and you look at the, the Fermi surface. These are the pi electrons. Uh, you have the graphene, you have the stack of graphene, you have pi electrons. Uh, superconductivity, zero. Sorry. Like a graphene. Superconductivity starts to go to 10 Kelvin. 
just few little sigma electron appearing. You have an opening again, there are very few electrons, Tc is 50 Kelvin. The variation of the chemical potential is only 20 mV. Now let us go to uh, iron based superconductors. Iron based superconductors of layers, and then uh, you go to uh, superconductivity zero. You have a lot of electrons. High density of series. All the theory of superconductivity should give you IPC, but nothing. Then the TC start to appear, arrive. At this point, you have a maximum TC. When you have opening a neck in one Fermi surface, it's a clear topological scene. What happened in this case? How is possible that uh, such a tiny number of, uh, of, of uh, uh, particles can cr produce quantum coherence? Uh, it's very simple. The, the reply was given by Hugo Fano. Hugo Fano is becoming a very famous uh, guy in the photonic community. That is, uh, two, two weeks ago was a, a, a special day, uh, the, a special page in the in Nature Photonics. Uh, it was my supervisor. <laughs> I like him very much. He was my, he's the person that uh, all the physics I started is influenced by this idea. I invented the examine spectroscopy following this idea. And uh, we found, uh, and then when we found that this uh, experimental, we are experimental, it's a monotone, if you are experimental, we found that this was the case, they say, this is a final resonance. Uh, what is a final resonance in this case? Uh, a final resonance uh, is uh, up here, here, because we have a Fermi surface here, you have a lot of free electrons, these are Fermi, Fermi and, and Fano didn't agree, because Fermi made the nuclear bomb and Fano said, I don't want to make it. And uh, so these are Fermi, so, but Fermi was not a good friend of Fano. But when Fermi died, uh, Chicago faculty gave the chair of, Fano, of Fermi to Fano. <laughs> and uh, in spite uh, that Fermi was the, was, uh, was the responsible for the Argonne National Laboratory of the nuclear physics in Chicago, but they gave the theory, the theory of chair uh, of physics to Fano that didn't do any nuclear bomb. Uh, so what happened here? You have the free electrons. So the free particles are electrons, they are everywhere. They are free particles, they are very dense, but each particles move along. Then there is another small Fermi surface, they are appearing a new Fermi surface, where you have uh, so, so little number of electrons, there are only two or three, they get they all the bosons, they cannot be free. So they are in the bosonic limit. Then you increase a little bit, and then you go, they becomes uh, free particles. Everything happened in 10 million electron volts, 50 million electron volts. And then at some point, a special point, so then you have uh, some uh, uh, some pairs here, very few. And then you have a lot of uh, older people who are inside here, and then all the wrong population, 5 million people around. But uh, you have very few people here in the, in the hall, but uh, then you have a lot of, then you start to have some correlation. We start to speak each other. And we start to make pairs when you discuss with another one face-to-face -face interaction, thanks to Magnum, we produce face-to-face -face interactions. And then we have fake pairs formations. And in some way, what Fano say, look, there is a quantum mechanic effect that uh, makes uh, the, this, the, these particles here and three people going on the runway on the highways. And uh, you have the pairs of uh, very fast uh, persons that becomes localized and then come back. In the quantum world, the two set of states are completely, uh, is a configuration interaction when you mix all the states. <coughs> and what happens is that these people start to be coherent. Um, so the, what happened here is that in this uh, set of uh, quantum wires or quantum uh, uh, you have uh, that the new appearing Fermi surface, a small appearing Fermi surface, everything in the range of 100 mV. And when you have this small here, then uh, they have a huge uh, configuration interaction with all the others. It's a pure quantum mechanical effects that is now very famous. And in 1906, uh, we just applied the uh, 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 theory of superconductivity. But following the final <laughs> inspiration, don't use BCS. 
DCST or in your superconductivity, use about five or six big approximations. Fano say, for God, use mathematics, use uh, perfect computer codes. Computer codes takes one day to calculate, but it's exact, it's no approximation. If you use uh, the volume of uh, uh, the, uh, the general solutions, and then make computer code, then you can see you can get uh, superconductivity at uh, 200 Kelvin. So this was 96. So this, uh, <laughs> uh, what was the idea of Fano? So this was Fano, uh, uh, age of uh, 28. He is in, uh, in uh, this place is in Wisconsin. Uh, and this is his friend, Uwa Marty. And Fermi invited both of them uh, in, the United, in the United States to make a conference to start the nuclear bomb project. And they were eating the, uh, the, coffee, the coffee break, and Fano said to Fermi, I don't really go on this project. Uh, so the idea of uh, Fano was that uh, if you excite, if you have helium, and you excite two electrons, uh, one in 2s, one in 2p, you have a big uh, helium atom, because now you have uh, two electrons confined uh, in a very big uh, shell. Uh, but this energy of these two electrons is the same as an electron uh, that, according to Einstein, has been four emitted. So this electron goes to, to another star. So it's completely free. But in quantum mechanics, the two configurations are mixed, and you can create the wave functions that were all contribute. So the electrons that go uh, away toward the sun and the, the stars come back. It is like when you go at, you are at home in the morning uh, and you wake up with your wife and then you go alone and you go uh, alone and you are in free particles but at some time in your life you will come back <laughs> and uh, I want to say that it's a quantum effect because this electron that is uh, going away is completely free at some point come back and they too come to the same place and in quantum mechanics this is, uh, a, a, a is something that is well described in periodical system, it's, a, it's very common. If I have a calcium ion, and I, I just drink a calcium in water, and then it becomes entangled in the calcium calmodulin interactions to produce energy and, and, and an electric signal in my brain. But then I, water goes away, and it's completely free. So you have this exchange between free particles and the bound particles that is a universal fission. Um, what we, is, we have shown uh, from theory uh, is that actually if you move this uh, Lipschitz parameter, the distance from the critical point of uh, order of 100, a few millimeters before, you can go to 0, 1 Kelvin DC, 200 or 300, 400 Kelvin. The problem is that uh, what uh, perhaps uh, all the speakers before me described, that in order to control uh, nanoscale material with such a fine tuning, it's very difficult. Uh, biological systems are very good because they know what to do. But uh, it took uh, uh, more than five billion years to get a self-organized system like a biological in itself. Uh, I think that we'll be going in this direction. We will solve the situation and we'll understand. We will understand. Look at what happened in this particular case, in the case of superconductivity. So you have a big Fermi surface okay, and, and a small Fermi surface. Uh, then you create uh, uh, pairs. Uh, you, you have a Fermi surface, you have superconducting pairs in the BCS regime. Then you have a very small uh, pairs, and then you have, uh, you have like a back. All the, all the pairs uh, start to condense uh, in the small one. Then uh, the final resonance uh, uh, introduce uh, the exchange term between the two. Uh, the most uh, recent uh, case that uh, I go very fast, uh, uh, you can find the paper yesterday on the archive, uh, where we say that actually uh, we can create a super lattice of, uh, of uh, nano ribbons uh, by plastics, by uh, terphenyl. And you can create, by plastic, uh, you can create uh, a, a system, uh, a self-molecular array of uh, polyphenyl nanoribbons, and uh, I think that it's uh, completely opening a new world. Uh, because then uh, in these materials is already 
uh, in the theory is in neurophysics later, so in last months, uh, you can get very easily uh, 200 Kelvin in this material. Uh, so it is possible that in the future we foresee the possibility to create uh, organic uh, plastic uh, wires uh, with uh, uh, room temperature superconductivity. Uh, uh, I think I have uh, a few, a lot of uh, five minutes. But in these five minutes, perhaps are the most important of the story. <laughs> <laughs> the story is the following, is that uh, if uh, it takes me 100 years, so from uh, in research of superconductors to found something that is uh, at minus 50 Kelvin, uh, then uh, I think it was uh, Leonard, uh, was, uh, was uh, Palermo that showed that it's very difficult to, to, to create a fake that is exactly like you want, because you have got so many things. So there should be something uh, that the biological systems know very well. Uh, that if you want uh, a, a fine tuning of the chemical potential at, uh, with one mdb energy range resolution, then uh, you have to consider that uh, this can be true for one, but not for the others. Uh, and, uh, and then you have to control uh, multi-scale phase separation. Because then you have uh, materials that get a mesoscale world completely different from uh, uh, and then we look at this uh, multi ray superconductor uh, looking for uh, different organizations uh, of dopants that you have to introduce and we developed in these last uh, seven years a new method that is uh, nano x-ray imaging uh, nano x-ray diffraction so uh, my previous uh, speaker, Professor Odile, presented the case of electron microscopy. But uh, you can do X-ray diffraction microscopy. Today, we reach a, a resolution of 50 nanometers. So you can take a flake, one micron, and you can collect uh, 100,000 diffraction. And you get the uh, huge tegabytes. So then it uh, takes uh, 10 years to deal with all these numbers. And uh, what do you see? Is that, for example, that oxygens in the multilayer, that is, uh, uh, this is a multilayer of uh, copper oxide materials, uh, you can have a case where you have a nano beams where you have a full crystalline size of order of uh, uh, 10 nanometer. But then you have uh, regions where you have nothing. Uh, and then you have, uh, uh, so the if you want to go back to, so you have a case where the chemical potential is too big and case where it's too low. So never you get the, the difference transition. So when it is super conductivity. So what uh, we discussed, we found that uh, we found a, a case where you have a 16 Kelvin superconductivity and you see a distribution of these bundles of uh, dopants. And then uh, you have another one with 40 Kelvin that is uh, quite different. But the number of dopants is exactly the same. TC change a lot, uh, but uh, the number of dopants is, 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 is the same. So what is going on is that the, the distribution of this, uh, uh, of these bundles is a scale-free. Scale-free distribution, uh, and if you change the statistical distribution, this should go from 40 to 16. Why? Because you have uh, grains that are at the Lipschitz transition, other they are not. But then you have to create a percolation between them. And then we took seven years to study statistical physics. And uh, we understood that uh, if you have a random distributions, uh, dc go to zero. But if you have a scale-free distribution, like Kalmflower, this is same tunings. Uh, and this is uh, dc go to zero. There is no quantum coherence at the room temperature. But in order to have a quantum coherence to do that, so you have to create nano, 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 nano particles where you have a scale-free distribution, where you have not Gaussian, but you have a power law distribution. That is exactly common in all biological systems. If you go in the market in Rome, in Captain Fury, you found a lot of cauliflower, which cut from a cauliflower. And, uh, and uh, this is the difference between uh, superconductor. We, we have another paper in, uh, in Asia, which is uh, another materials. Uh, this is Another layer, but here you have uh, atomic wires. 
And uh, these are not superconductor because there's a lot of doping. Here is a zero, so the, the Lipschitz transition is something in between. But uh, in order to have a uh, uh, very high temperature superconductivity, you need a scale free distribution. This is a power, you can see, it's completely an homogeneous material. This is interesting for the talks of uh, different talks that, that this morning. That uh, if you control the statistical distribution of heterogeneity, and you create uh, a power law distribution, the exponent is uh, 2.5. Uh, the full width is a Levy distribution. But they have a, the, when you have a quantum coherence, the statistical distribution is very well defined. We have studied now about four or five different families. And they are all the same, uh, uh, always also in many, like this famous one, uh, there is no doping, continuous doping. You have only finite, uh, finite doping. Uh, and uh, then they always, uh, when we have ITC, you have these huge uh, tails with a, a special uh, uh, quantum mechanics, uh, quantum statistical distribution. So uh, social network so scale free distribution. Uh, protein protein interaction in the cell show uh, uh, earthquakes show scale free distribution. And all, only uh, quantum coherence can emerge uh, in, 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 in the in the, in, the, in the room temperature world, uh, in our microscopic world, uh, uh, through uh, a, a, a scale-free distribution of uh, pattern. Uh, it is, uh, so we, have, uh, we, we discussed also charge density waves, uh, uh, also they make uh, puddles. Also they have, uh, you can have uh, different, uh, uh, different domains. You have uh, dopants, charge density waves, spin density waves, you have different uh, pitches but all go with the same uh, power law exponent. So this means that you have uh, a, a coherent, uh, uh, and what was the most beautiful research uh, in this uh, statistical physics investigation is that when you start to have superconductivity going through this uh, interface, then you find uh, uh, something that, uh, okay, let me go fast. Uh, so the important is uh, to go around, uh, so it's not the patch here essentially, but uh, what is going in the surface uh, that is important. And what you found is that this uh, geometry is an hyperbolic geometry. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a geometry that Einstein found uh, in, the, in the world and what Escher uses in his, uh, if you take Escher paintings, they are produced with a computer code that uh, uh, where the lines uh, follow the hyperbolic geometry in the 2D. So this is uh, a, a new physics and uh, let me just finish with saying that uh, this world uh, we have found now, uh, this year, with uh, my group, uh, we have found exactly the same world in the Shadik nerve. You know the Shadik nerve when you have some pain? Uh, is a long nerve that goes here. And uh, we took the one from the frog. And uh, it's a multi-layer of uh, this one. It's a yellow sheet. Uh, it's a multi-layer with the periodicity is uh, 17 uh, nanometer. And uh, this is a diffraction. This is a hydrophobic hydrophilic layers. Uh, each one is a one point, this is 1.6 nanometer, 1.6. This is a, a three nanometer. And uh, we found that uh, uh, you have a, a power law distribution in the structure, as uh, you can see in the papers. But the, what is most important one is that uh, when the nerve, you give energy, uh, come to the first talk. You, you, give, you have to give to, this, to the nerve uh, to be living, you have to give energy. You can give ATP, you have to give oxygen, uh, you have to eat the Italian pasta, and uh, you have to use energy. And when you have energy in the living states is a power law distribution with 2.5 distribution. But if you keep uh, 10 hours and you don't give any more food and no more uh, oxygen, then it's going to dead. But uh, nothing change. Only the distribution of power law become the ocean. If you give back, you expect that we come back. But if you have a uh, a, 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 ocean dis a power law distribution in the living systems that create the, the quantum coherence in the living matter. I think this is a nice perspective for developing new electronic materials and controlling the physics of this. 
And I thanks again, Volta, and excuse me for being out of time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, so, and thanks all my collaborators. <laughs> you know, questions? Uh, just, a, just a very quick one. Are we going to be seeing soon room temperature sup superconductors in uh, real life? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think so. I think, uh, the, uh, so you see, the exponential is going up. So the, 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 all the confusion is uh, now. The, what I say uh, is, uh, is something that I developed in 10 years, but uh, the community is uh, getting the same. So the, the big advance is that now people understand that all the approximation of a homogeneous material with a strong coupling is not important. There is always community is accepting this point. And uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, new techniques like uh, single radiation, uh, microscopy, to so solve the problem. And I think uh, so. I think that uh, is uh, what I'm informing is that I think that uh, uh, the, uh, there is a new generation. So you need a new generation of people that start to understand that. Uh, Complexity is interesting. Is that in complexity, you can find the fundamental laws. Like uh, Odilo was saying, uh, we are physicists and we look for fundamental laws. But uh, up to now, all the community of traditions were thinking to very simple systems. So, but uh, the life is different. <laughs>
but it's complex materials. It's not homogeneous aluminum metal. It's not aluminum neon. Nothing to do. Not silicon. So it's not. Uh, it's a. It's a living set. Professor Bianconi, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you discussed about uh, domain shaped uh, superconductivity properties of the exactly. material. Yeah. Does it mean that uh, the superconductivity is possible in nanocrystalline material? So the anatomy exactly. is possible? Exactly. It's, uh, uh, I think I can go back to a beautiful case that we studied, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's the last one. I think that's. Yes, uh, this one. Uh, this is a, a crystal, it's a, it's, a, it's a chemical mercury and so on. Tc is 95 Kelvin. The magnetic, the drop of Tc is very narrow. Very narrow. It looks like a completely homogeneous, it's tetragonal, completely homogeneous superconductor. Very, very low, no flat question. When you have the disordered materials, this becomes uh, white. But you look. You have atomic wise and magnetic, not dope at the top. You have a doping is nearly one and zero. Average is zero fifteen, but how is possible that you have such a homogeneous system with a, such a sharp transition? The reply is because you have power law distribution with a lot of long percolations pathways, completely overlook all the crystals with the power law exponent two point five. So there is a percolation pathway. Then we give you completely. Uh, we made, uh, I think uh, Nicola Boccia made uh, artificial uh, networks, and you can see that uh, as soon as you go away from power law, then uh, uh, becomes very wide. So as soon, we don't need, in order to make this wide, it's enough that you shake a little bit your sample, <laughs> and then you get. Uh, I have another. I can show you another transition, completely different. The same number of oxygens, the same doping, the same doping like the first questions. So, the, but because uh, you have uh, these critical positions uh, of the chemical potential in the nano, I think this is very important also for the previous talk in the morning. So you can have a very, very tiny situation that you want, but it's not important that it's completely homogeneous. You have to control the statistical distribution in such a way you have a long range pathways that have the same electronic properties. And uh, I understand that it's difficult, <laughs> but uh, we know now what to do. <laughs> I think uh, this is makes a big revolution. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.